This week, UiPath is going to be raising more than $1 billion in an IPO. The company founded back in Bucharest, Romania, is going to be hitting public markets and selling the future of RPA, Robotic Process Automation. In today's video, we're going to talk about that industry's viability, their future as a SaaS platform, and the bull and bear case for investing. It is Monday, April 19th. This is the Piper Rundown. We analyze business and culture to help you win. Today's rundown is presented by Jetstore. Jetstore has been providing affordable, reliable, and easy to manage data storage and cloud solutions to over 4,000 customers worldwide for more than 26 years. That's longer than I've been alive. They offer so much storage. It's slightly younger than how long I've been alive. Mm, old. Jetstore offers storage systems for private cloud hosting, video surveillance, internet of things, AI, machine learning, edge computing, data archiving, HPC, media production, medical imaging, and flight simulation. For more details, visit jetstore.com. Thank you for sponsoring the rundown. Another week, another monster IPO. This week, coming to you live from the New York Stock Exchange will be UiPath. And despite them claiming to have a New York headquarters, this is actually an enormous win for Romania. Who'd have thought? Bucharest, Romania is where the company was founded back in 2005. Took them uh, more than seven years to recognize the business model opportunity that would be uh, their transcendent moment, raise them above being uh, a software developer, um, kind of ad hoc agency into a scalable B2B SaaS enterprise. That pivot that occurred starting in 2012 and completed through 2015 that led to their first seed investment in 2015 was around robotic process automation. And as people talk about this IPO, you'll hear RPA, RPA, RPA. What is RPA? This is hard for folks like us that are relatively young companies mm -hmm. with all the kind of most forward uh, so software solutions embedded into right. the way and our firm is structured. It. We're, we're, it, it's in the DNA because we're of the times. Yes. But a lot of large enterprises have a legacy software systems that are not fully functional with all the latest uh, specs and capacities and just have technical debt in that they're not able to quickly onboard and integrate all the newest functions. And so you have these old legacy systems that need to interact and talk to one another. And in many large enterprises, what that results in is humans doing very, very repetitive digital tasks, like looking at one screen, seeing an invoice number, copying that invoice number, or typing out that invoice number into a field on another software solution. Right. Very repetitive, very well within the framework of what humans are capable of doing. Robotic process automation is the ability for effectively a software to come in and create what today would just be two APIs. You have an API on this software, you have an API on that software, and they're able to interact with one another. Yep. These legacy, legacy systems, not so much. RPA fills that gap mm -hmm. where a human otherwise would. Um, so as part of this IPO, they are raising 1.2 billion Billion dollars. They've increased their revenue la previous year, 336 million, up to 607 million. Crazy. So substantial growth for an already big company. This is the this is the Mac Daddy though. If you want the reason someone like me would get excited about a company like this, it is right here. The net revenue retention. Hannah, we've talked about this in the past. Oh, yeah. What is a good net revenue retention? A good net, oh God, put me on the spot. Good net revenue retention, I don't know. So <laughs> net revenue retention is your churn, how many people are leaving software, versus right. how much the revenue is expanding. Yes, makes sense. So if you're over 100%, that means your existing customers are paying you more than you are losing customers on an annualized basis. Right. Very strong companies look like over 120% net revenue retention. This is the idea of land and expand. We come into one department, Slack, it's used by this little department at the org, mm -hmm. and then it expands outward, more users, more payment, larger net revenue retention. 
UI paths is 145%. Wow. Very, very strong. They also serve a ton of Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies. And here's the kind of savvy move here. So think about all those consultants, McKinsey, Bain, Ernst & Young, Accenture. They come into these large orgs and pitch digital transformation or process automation, which is a really clever way of saying, instead of paying humans a handsome salary in order to do those redundant tasks, we'll find software solutions that will save you money so that you can cut staff, so that you can lay off humans and cut your expenses, make more revenue, earnings per share goes up, you executives get comped more. Makes sense though. I mean, they kind of went through that themselves in their company history, so obviously there's, they know what they're talking about. So those consultants learn this software, or there's other competitors, Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere. They come into companies, and these are all uh, UiPath uh, customers in the present or at least in the past. Toyota, GE, BMW, Lufthansa, McDonald's, Exxon, Chevron, Bank of America, Amazon. They come into those companies, they implement a solution like UiPath, they collect their fee for the implementation and the recommendation, and then that software, that B2B SaaS solution, is embedded. And the, we know about these large enterprise so solutions, the reason they have those enterprise softwares, uh, legacy enterprise systems, that need RPA is the fact that these companies don't turn over those legacy software systems very often. And so that is, as we move towards the bull case and we try to explain the net revenue retention, that is the driver of that. Like we mentioned, first seed investment in 2015, most recently, February 2021, just before this IPO, a $750 million Series F at a $35 billion, billion. Dollar valuation. Uh, investors have included Sequoia and Tiger Global, so we're so glad that those guys get another win under their, their belt. They've really, they've really needed it. Oh yeah. Sometimes I realized we, we got a comment the other day. They don't quite get like the sarcasm. Oh yeah. Those are the two most prolific uh, large venture investors, uh, late stage venture investors around. They don't need any more wins, but they're getting them. UiPath is only for Windows solutions, speaking of legacy solutions. As we move towards the bull and the bear case here, that is gonna be a very important lever by which we evaluate UiPath's bull and bear case moving into the future. The bull case is very large macro stuff. Number one, the RPA market is set to grow as the RPA tools get better at doing tasks that humans otherwise would, yep. and these companies don't necessarily switch off of their legacy software systems. Mm -hmm. There is also an enormous demographic cliff hitting most of the developed world. Japan has already hit it, but when you look at most of the developed economies around the globe, and UiPath has substantial international growth, this is not constrained to American markets, although right. they'll cite mostly American companies as they prepare for an IPO in they, the New York arena. They do have roots in Romania. Roots in Romania, offices literally around the entire globe. Offices in Japan is one market that they've been very successful in, bringing automation to a economy that is short of young workers generally that would be doing these kind of lower um, complexity tasks. So those are two really big markers to the positive, to the bull case, and um, why people will pile into a stock like this, in addition to the fact that B2B SaaS gets fantastic multiples, markets love it, right. for reasons we've talked about in past episodes of the show. We're gonna talk about three elements of a bear case here. This is not indicative that we're stronger in the bear case, but you need the full picture. The first is, you do not wanna be a bag holder. What we mean by that is, is um, in really frothy speculative run-ups, there is always that last person that buys before the downturn, and valuations are exceptionally, exceptionally high right now. So if you are looking at the macro picture and saying, which type of firms are going to hit you the hardest if you are to be a bag holder for a market downturn, mm -hmm. B2B SaaS with the most stratospheric valuations, uh, we look at like Snowflake, which had a fantastic IPO and has now got a um, multiple on revenues of like multiple hundred X. I think it's come down a little bit, but 
that is the type of thing that is so exorbitant that when gravity comes in with a market correction, there's the furthest distance with which to fall versus some conventional company that might have a 15x multiple of revenue. It's substantially lower if you go down to 4x, 5x, 6x, right? right? So there's the starting point. You need to be mindful of that, particularly if there's a first day pop. We saw it with the Coinbase one. Went mm -hmm. 250, 420, and then yeah. back down to the low 300s. You don't want to be the person that buys on that kind of initial exuberant pop. Right. The second part, there are better SaaS solutions. There are softwares that are more modern that when implemented simply have APIs that talk with the other top tier software solutions mm -hmm. and cut out the need for this RPA. Now, the likelihood that every major org is gonna all implement more modern software solutions imminently is relatively unlikely. But in that same picture of a macro market downturn, it is the old legacy companies that use the old legacy software companies, the ones that are still on Oracle and not on AWS and not on Azure and not on those more modern solutions that are more likely to catch an uppercut right to the chin and have a substantially smaller business and therefore need for an RPA like this. So there's, there's another element of the story there. And then the last part is more competition. So we referenced Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere. If you're in the IT space, you're familiar with that. If you're not in the IT space, you have no idea what that is. There are a number of other cloud providers that we just referenced, Microsoft, Oracle, SAP, Adobe, that are building their versions of RPA. Yeah. And that is a different level of competition than what UiPath has had to uh, compete with for the preceding five years. So that level of competition is something to be considerate of as you try to chart the future cash flows of this company, which is what ultimately equity valuations are about. Remember, we are not your financial advisors. Make your own decisions. Please make your own decisions. What else should they do? I don't know. I think that you should like and subscribe if you found this helpful. We post new episodes of the Piper Rundown every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Sheesh. Sheesh. And ring the bell for notifications. Dang it. I visited my grandma over the weekend, and I saw that she had a bell outside of her door. I was... I forgot to ask her if I could take it, but... We still gotta do that. Yeah. Second story, real quick, is Clubhouse is raising a, another round of funding, uh, excuse me, at a $4 billion valuation. Andreessen Horowitz is leading the round for the third consecutive round, this time bringing in Tiger Global and DST. Um, this is a move. You still haven't gotten on Clubhouse. I am an Android user, so no, I have not. They're gonna need to open that up relatively soon. Yes. Um, but this is a move that is very simply about not taking whatever acquisition offer they've already received. Yeah, 100%. I, so like, I think the Clubhouse buzz has simmered a little For bit. Sure. Um, and I'm sure that they're trying to maintain or at least like get the hype back up a little bit so they can get that next offer or raise that next round. And I don't know, I like they're, they're still not on Android, which is mind boggling to me. Hopefully they'll have that software update with this new round of funding. But yeah, Clubhouse, it's in a weird spot right now. I think they're in trouble. I, I think that if they had the acquisition offer, they should have taken it and gotten it. I know VCs, the VCs, are incentivized to push the pedal and go for the multi, multi, multi bagger, but it feels like a feature. I have had no desire to go right. on that app at any point recently. The only times it's interesting is when like one of the premier shows are having some premier guests. Yeah, and and to combat Clubhouse, like I've gone on the Twitter live spaces, spaces a couple of Great. times and it's awesome. It, you, it's the same exact thing and just much more convenient. I've actually been on Twitter spaces more than Clubhouse in the last three weeks. Well, obviously I've been Despite the having same. both apps, yeah. that's the point. Yeah, so I don't know. Clubhouse, you gotta figure your shit out. I don't know, we'll see. That's a rundown. Thanks for watching.